won't let go like a river rising higher. I've got joy, and I've got joy, and I've got joy down in my soul. I've got peace, it won't let go like a river rising higher. I've got joy, I've got joy, I've got joy down in my soul. I've got peace, it won't let go. Put your hands. 
too dense and put off my rags. You turn my smoke goes up day and night where the incense is always rising God every prayer with wings to soar to your throne Lord God Lord let this house be established Lord let every individual house and every regional house of prayer be established Lord God let us be a people that burn day and night and night and day and day and night and night and day and day and night night and day Never go out, never go out. Let the smoke rise, let the smoke rise, let the smoke rise, let the prayers ascend, let the prayers ascend, oh, let the smoke rise. Let your heart rise. Let the prayers ascend. Let the prayers ascend. Let the prayers ascend. Oh, oh, oh. May the fire on our altar never burn out. Fire on my altar never burn out fire on my altar never burn out make me a house of prayer oh may the fire on my altar never burn out fire on my altar never burn out let the fire on my altar never burn out make me a house of prayer oh, make us a house Make us a house of prayer. We want to see your face, want to see your face. And Lord, make us a house. Make us a house of prayer. Oh, a house of prayer. And may the fire on my altar never burn out. Fire on my altar never burn out. Fire on my altar, never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Fire on my altar, never burn out. Fire on my altar, never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. We hear the 
the sounds in the holy place, in the holy place. Oh, oh. we tune our ears to hear your sound, your voice in the holy place, in the holy place. you say we respond to what you say we respond to what you say we treasure your voice and your sound in the holy holy place we respond to what you say we respond to what you say we treasure your voice your sound that we hear in the holy place oh lord Lord says, I'm giving you a restored valve that looks like a hook. And it's for us to cast out into the heavens and lay hold of the, of the coals on the altar. He said to bring it back in. You can't, we can't do it with our old prayer, our old worship. We have to cast it like a hook and bring it back in. The Lord says it's, it's like a, it's a spiritual force of faith. It's a spiritual force of joy that only comes out of the altar of God. And that this is the day and this is the hour that the Lord says that faith is going to come on my people like never before. And joy is going to bubble up out of the river of God like never before. But you got to say, I'm going to go and I'm going to place the hook in it. Day and night and night and day. Day and night and night and day. Day and night and night and day. I want to see your face. I want to see your face. Day and night, night and day. Day and night, night and day. Day and night, night and day. I want to see your face, want to hear your voice. I lay my life. I lay my life. On the altar, on the altar. upon our lips oh place a coal upon our lips touch our lips with a coal of fire we want to speak your word want to speak your voice touch our lips with a coal from the altar touch our lips with a coal from the altar oh we want to speak your word we want to speak your voice we want to be Calling us up, calling us up. Oh, let your decrees go out from your throne. Let your decrees go out. Let the scrolls be put in the hands of the angels you will send. Oh, we say, and here am I, send me. And here am I, send me.
come up to a new level. We come up. decrees being nailed on doors decrees being nailed on doors and the Lord's putting a hammer in your hand and a nail in the other and you have a decree it's a scroll and he's putting it in your hand and he's saying who will go for us and whom shall we send I'm telling you lift your hands up and just begin to receive some new assignments receive some new places in prayer receive some new authority Receive some new power. Receive a new garment. I just saw garments just sliding down over your hands and your arms. Receive, receive, because this is an hour that is not like any other hour that we have been on this earth. It's not like any other hour that we've been been here. And it's like the Lord says, I have need of you. 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 Of you, of you, of you. And I just saw something in your hand that looked like the steak tenderizer. And it was like a mallet. It's like a mallet to begin to pound some things into shape. There's some things that need to be pounded into shape. And, and there, you know, the enemy doesn't just align himself with the way things should be. And sometimes, most all the times, we're the enforcers in this realm. This is our realm. This is our house. The earth is our house. The earth is our house. And Lord, we just say now, we receive a new anointing, Lord, a new equipping for the house that we are in called earth. And Lord, we just say, uh, show us God, direct, teach, Lord God, distribute new things things and new strategies and abilities and new tools, Lord God, as some things that have not been in subjection, Lord, begin to come into subjection in a new way in the earth. And Lord, we thank you that, Lord God, these people gathered are immensely powerful, immensely powerful, Lord, beyond what they can imagine because of the spirit of Christ that dwells in them and because of the Holy Spirit who is their paraclete. Lord, so we just say now, we're going to shake off an old uh, self-pity image or a self-esteem issue. And Lord, we say we are esteem. All our esteem is in you. Lord God, all of our rivers are in you. Lord, all of our flow is in you. All of our authority is in you, Lord God. And Lord, I just ask that you would stake each one of us into a new place. Father God, to take a new ground this hour, God, because we're staked in a new place with you. So Lord, we just loose now a new wind of intercession to blow. I want you to reach your hand to the one next to you. There's a strength. There's a solidarity. There's something that the Lord is forming. There was such, when it started this morning with 6 a.m. breakthrough prayer in here, there was something that's stirring to break out. And the Lord wants us to establish the mindset that we're not isolated. We're not abandoned. We're not too weak. We're not too pained. We don't have too much sickness. The Lord is bringing his body together in a way that we corporately form something that he can establish that he can develop, that he can release. So, Father, we say this time is yours. We say this time is yours, that we've come as a corporate people. If you're joining us on webcast, reach your hand out. You are not alone. You are not isolated. You are a part of a body. That you are connected to a place that is tied to the flow of the river of God. Holy Spirit, we say have your way in this place. Have your way in this weekend, Lord. 
We have anticipation for what you're desiring to break forth, to birth, to establish, to nail. Holy Spirit, we thank you for this time. We say, have your way. That we as a people choose to come in alignment with your plans and purposes today. We say this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we want to invite you to this uh, Triumphant Faith Institute, our exhortation and deliverance component. We want to welcome so many of you who've traveled from other nations. I I know there's people from many different cities here in the United States, but if you've come from another nation, could you just stand up one second? How many nations that we have here? On the webcast, you might not see it, but we've got a great group here from different nations. So thank you for joining us. We want to welcome you here to the Global Sphere Center. For all of you that have come for Head of the Year and other meetings here, we're excited to have you with us. So you may have a seat. Thank you. So today we're excited that uh, Marty Cassidy is going to help us continue on this road. She's going to teach, teach our share today about a new journey of faith, some things that the Lord has been showing her. So Marty, we want to ask you to come up. I want you to join me in inviting Marty here. And so I don't think it's a coincidence that Marty at... The end of the year, the beginning of the year, the Lord has been showing her things about a new pathway and learning to pray in a new way. So even as I was just overwhelmed in worship today, the sense that my spirit has here of something looking to break out for us to get on a new path that began early this morning has been leading up to this point. So, Marty, we invite you to help take us down that path. Okay. All right. We're just going to have a journey with the Lord here. Okay. I want to pray, first of all, because... What I want us to get today is a sense of moving into intercession in a new way that pulls that thing which you've been praying for from way out there right in here until you see the answer. And so, Lord, I want to thank you today for your word. I want to thank you for just speaking down from heaven into the earth realm, into a clay vessel. I want to thank you that you have said that we are getting ready to plunder. Intercession will become plundering, not what we've known in the past, but a new force in the earth realm to take out the enemies of the Most High God. We have a joke here that every time someone shares something with Chuck, they get, they get put up here to teach it. <laughs> but you know, that's a good thing. He's, give, he's giving us all a chance. We're hearing from lots of different people. But But most of all, we're hearing what God is bringing down out of the heavenly realms into the earth. This all started several weeks ago in 6 uh, 6 a.m. prayer when um, I can't remember who was leading, but I was standing there. I was the worship was incredible. I was just allowing the spirit of the Lord to speak to me. And I heard the Lord say, ask of me one thing and I will grant Today, ask of me one thing and I will grant it. And I can remember in that morning, I went up and I loosed that word and jokingly I said, now the one thing you're going to ask is not for a new car or anything like that. Ask something spiritual. And I knew in my heart what I had been asking for since the year 2000, 15 years. In 2000, I underwent a surgery that was very lengthy, almost nine hours. And I came out, and, and there have been some things that have never quite been the same. And the one thing, everything I've gotten back except the one thing that I asked him for that day was the ability to fast. For some reason, that was taken from me in that surgery in 2000. And I've been pressing in. I've tried. You know, I would try to fast, and I would get about a half day or a day. I lived a fasted life. I mean, that's just how the Lord began to work with me and and deal with me. And it grieved me that I could not get there again. Well, I asked for the one thing. He gave me the one thing. He gave me the one thing. And on the second day of a three-day fast 
the first actual fast that I had been able to do in 15 years, he began to speak to me. I was just up early, and I've been carrying a burden in intercession, and I was beginning to to speak into that, and I was saying, come on back. Come on back. You know, and when you're, when you're an intercessor and when you get into that place, you carry something that that just becomes, it's like you're part of who you are until that season is over. And he said to me, this is what he said. I wrote it down. You're calling back that which you see. Okay, that I was looking at this in the way that I saw it in the natural. He said, you're calling back that which you see, but I say call back that which I formed before the foundation of the world. Way back there. You are to call the spirit back that I predestined to be mine. Two key words here. Foundation of the world, whoa. Okay, way back there. Predestined. I don't totally understand that. I'm not a theologian. I don't have to understand it. Predestined means to me, he just figured it all out, and he said, this is going to be the way it is. And if I really believe the word, and we all do, right? We're coming into days of awe, and what the Lord is saying in this season is this. He's going to begin to drop into our spirits as we're in the Word. We're going to read the Word, and it's going to open up in a way like it's never opened up before. There, There is so much depth in the world. I've read it for over 40 years. I've studied it, and I read this. I read something, and I think, I never saw that before. I know we're all like that. It's 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 the timing of the Lord for us to move into a new position, into a new position. And one of the scriptures that he brought out to me was Ephesians 1, 4 and 6, and we all know this. It says, he chose us in him before the foundation. That foundation there means conception, to conceive. He chose us in in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined, that word means determined beforehand. Okay? It's not complicated. He determined beforehand. He predestined us to adoptions as as sons by Jesus Christ in himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. So there was something happening here. And this Ephesians, uh, three quarters of the New Testament has been written by Paul. We know that. But, But what he's writing here in Ephesians, you have to put it in a context of he wrote this under constraint. And let me tell you why I say that. Because in 2 Corinthians 12, Paul talks about this man. You know, and he says, I don't know if he was in the spirit or out of the spirit. But he was taken up into paradise and he was shown and he heard things that were inexpressible, unutterable. All right. If Paul was taken up in, into the heavenly realms... And that, that's where we, you and I need to, to get hold of and begin to live. If he was taken up there and he heard things and he saw things, he heard things that were unutterable, that were inexpressible, and then he comes back down and he starts writing that before the foundation of the world, before the foundation, he, he saw things that he couldn't write, but he says before the foundation of the world, I have predestined. I have planned this. I have set this in motion. I have put this on a track, and it can't be taken out. Are you getting something that's going to encourage you in your intercession in this? All right, look all the way, all the way from the foundation of the world to what he has predestined for us. And we know that there were lots of things before the foundation of the world. For one thing, the lamb was slain 
before the foundation of the world. There were things that we can't begin to understand that were unfolding in that time. But one of them was that that you and I were predestined, that our loved ones that we've been praying for, that the situations that they're in have been predestined till we should be able to enter into a place in intercession to pull that through. It is time. It is time. Romans 8, 9. I I just was all over the word with this thing. And I had to just hone it down. You know, I get off on rabbit trails and the Lord, you know, because I just love the word. But, But Romans 8, 9 says, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, the spirit of God dwells in each one of us. So what we see, here's another thing Paul wrote. What we see is all going to pass away. But that spiritual, that supernatural uh, uh, place where the Lord is calling our spirits is eternal. So our job is to not be conformed to the world, but to begin begin to be transformed till we're, we're interacting and we're speaking and we're living and moving and having our being in a place in the spirit realm because before the foundation of the world we didn't look like we do now we were spirit we were spirit and as i was praying that day and interceding when the lord began to say you're looking at this thing and you're not looking at it the way i want you to see it and you're not You're not seeing it in the power to pull it out. We need to pull some things out personally, corporately, globally, and it's time. And I just believe these days of awe as we're moving up toward this this new season that the Lord is going to begin to unfold. I just feel like the bowls are tipping over for us in a way they've never, ever been tipped before. Romans 8, 29 says, For whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. Be not conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he called. That's us. And those he called, he justified. That's us. And then he glorified us. In the spirit realm, what the Lord showed me that day, and I'm not a scientist, I don't understand a lot of those things, but what I saw was almost a formation like a cross between DNA and a jellyfish. I mean, that's just what he showed me, okay? You can... You can go ask him what he's going to show you that looks like. That's what I began to see. And I began to see this, this formation, this spirit, this predestined spirit back before the foundation of the world when all kinds of things were going on, like the lamb being slain. I mean, I mean that's the defining thing in our history So what was it like before the foundation of the world? And I began to see this spirit, and I began to cry for it. Come forward. Come out. Come on. And the Lord began to remind me of where I'm seated. And if you know me, you know my favorite scripture. And it's Ephesians 2, 4 through 6. And so I began to look at that scripture in a whole new, a whole new way. And, and it says this, but God who's rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together, together with Christ. By grace, you've been saved. And then he raised us up together. Now that together, after the first together that means being alive, the second together actually means that that we're coming up and we're reviving 
not only have we gone from death to life, but we're being revived spiritually. And then finally, he says, I'm going to sit you together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Those togethers were so interesting to me when I started digging into it because the third together actually comes from a root word that means union. Paul wrote this, this scripture. He wrote it under constraint. I can't believe it. And he said, we're, 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 We've been made alive together. We've been revived spiritually together. We've been called up and we've been placed in, in a place of union with Jesus Christ. It's, it's unimaginable sometimes. I mean, it goes over my head. And yet I just keep saying, no. I mean, he's telling us this, but he's not able to tell us a lot. And this, to me, changed my life because when I began several years ago to see I'm not supposed to be looking at things from down here on this crazy sod we live on, but I'm supposed to be seated. I'm supposed to be lifted, and I'm in union with Christ Jesus. I'm just like in there, okay? And some of the versions I don't like because they don't say in. Some of them just say, oh, you're just sitting there. You know, you're sitting beside him. There's a difference. We're in him. We are in him. He is in us. And we're in heavenly realms looking down on something, interceding for something, looking at it and knowing that he has planned something from before the foundation of the world. He's predestined. He's foredetermined something. So why are our prayers not being answered? And why are we not plundering when we go in for that person or that situation or that nation? Why are we not seeing it? It's not heaven's fault. There's no lack up there. It's us. It's us understanding that we get rid of all the, all the things that would hold us back. Those little nee, 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 that the enemy will come in and say, oh, you didn't really hear that. He didn't really tell you that. That's what we need to be doing when it says to be transformed by the renewing of your mind because that's where it's going to begin. But if we begin to understand that we look, now I'm sorry, but if we look something like a DNA jellyfish, we're spirit. We have the third person of the Godhead. His name is Holy Spirit within us. And I could say more, but I'm not because I'll get in trouble right now. But, we have Holy Spirit. God in the earth realm, okay? And he's in us. He's in us. And can you imagine if you begin to fathom just this room alone, not even thinking about the, the amount of people in the crowd, the, the Holy Spirits that are going to be walking in here when we come to that big meeting on Thursday. Can you imagine the power? Power to plunder. Say it. I have the power to plunder. I have the power to plunder. In the name of Jesus, everything he tells us, you begin to put it together. Everything Paul wrote, I can't read anything Paul wrote now without just camping out on it because I know he's, he's saying something that there was something even more that he couldn't say. Help me, Lord. I mean. And then the, the Lord reminded me when I, when I started getting into this union and this seated in heavenly places. And I have to say, I thought I knew all there was to know about that scripture because, I mean, it's been my favorite scripture for years. He just keeps opening it, opening it, teaching me about sitting up there, being in Christ. And 
And then he reminded me of John 17, 24. Now, this is the beloved son in that great prayer that Jesus himself prayed before he went, before he left. And he's crying out to his father. And, you know, all the teachings that we've got, that when we cry out to the father, he's going to answer us. Well, just think about this one was from his own son. His own son said, Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you've given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. Father God is not about not to answer that. We just haven't gotten hold of it. Jesus himself said, I desire that they be with me, that they would be given the glory, that they would be with me. And and all of these things that you preordained before the foundation of the world, that prayer, my friends, is a yes and amen on the part of Father God. Our, Our peace is to get hold of it and to begin to walk it out, to begin to, to, to say, Lord, whatever you need to show me, however you need to, to speak to me, to take me into an understanding in my spirit realm. It's not an intellectual understanding. It is not intellectual. It's spirit to spirit. It's heaven and earth. It's heaven touching earth. And here we stand. We have a piece of heaven right in us. And we we don't always realize that. We don't walk it out like we realize it. We don't go up against the enemy like we know that. We say, Lord, would you do this? Would you do that? That's not apostolic prayer, folks. If you don't have a word of the Lord and you can't be, begin to decree a thing and see it established in the name of Jesus, don't. We've got to move. We've got to come up higher. And we've got to do it as a corporate body. Corporately. Corporately. We have to come into an understanding. We have to come in into a meeting like we're getting ready to go into. And, and I, I've just been looking at this picture, securing the gates of our future, and looking at this picture, and it's violent. But that's who we must become, to plunder everything the enemy has taken and every situation he has turned Every person he's taken, every situation, every nation, this is a new day. It is a day to cross over and begin to realize that that before the foundation of the earth, the Lord began. He he predetermined all of these things. All All of this was happening over there. And then he says, through Paul. Now, Paul, I'm going to show you stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you stuff, but you got to go down and you can't say this and you can't say that, but you can tell them they're seated in me, with me, in union with me. And so they have the power of heaven on earth. We have the power because of Jesus and what he did. He's the one that prayed it. God the Father's the one that answered it. Now we've got to walk in it. Then after I had the revelation, I began to see the Spirit. I began to realize, okay, that was before the foundation of the earth. This was predestined. There's no way this can't come forward. There's no way... This can't change. I'm just, I'm just setting a valve down. There's no way this can't change. It will change because of Jesus and because of the unction he gives us when we intercede. It will change. Then, then he showed me this person. And, and it can be a person. It can be a situation. And it was way down in a pit. 
It was way down in a pit. And the Lord began to say, call it up. Call it up. Call it up out of the pit. There's a, there's a scripture in Psalm 69. It's 69, 1 and 2. And then I skipped over to 15 if you want to make a note. This is what the psalmist is saying. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the deep mire where there is no standing. How many of you know people that, that are there? The, you know, there are places that the Psalms describe where we can, there's a land of forgetfulness. There's a place, there, there are these places where the enemy can try and take someone, can take a spirit. But he says, I sink in the deep mire where there's no standing. I've come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. It's just like, oh my God, how much more can happen? I'm just being overwhelmed. I'm flooded over, uh, you know, and I'm saying this in terms of, of some situations and people you're praying for. But then he says, let not the flood water overflow me, nor let the deep swallow me up, and let not the pit shut its mouth on me. And the Lord said, you're calling that up out of the pit. Because that's where the enemy wanted to take that, right down in the pit. But you call that up out of the pit. You take your position in Christ, in the heavenlies, and your knowledge that I foreordained, I predestined before the foundation of the world to bring this thing up out of the pit and, and see my hand move. Begin to see my hand move. That's what he said. Remember again, he said, you're calling back that which you see, but I say call back that which I've formed before at the foundation of the world. Call the spirit back to be mine. Quit getting entangled with what we see. And then two days ago, the Lord started talking to me about the call railway in in Colorado Springs, and I thought, Lord, what do you mean by that? And he said, <clears throat> I want you to go look it up. And I could remember I lived in Colorado Springs. So I remember going up to the top of Pikes Peak on that Cog Railway, and I remember the a guide that day giving information about the railway and the fact that it was, it was called a Cog Railway. So the Lord said, look it up. And I looked it up, and what I saw was that a regular railroad, let me see if I can find this. Well, anyway, a regular railroad is on two tracks, and it's, it's, um, Somehow or another, the locomotive uses friction of the tracks to go. A cog railway, on the other hand, is is a, a like a gear and it's placed on a on a track that propels it forward. And the thing about the cog railway and any cog railway, they're used often in Switzerland and in high places, is that a cog railway, unlike the rails that we see in normal, you know, here and there and everywhere around here, it can take you from the very bottom to the very top. And only a cog pull can do that because of the way that gear is locking in on that track. And it go, it can propel a, a train car up to heights that a regular rail, railroad road could never do. And then the Lord said, see if you can't find a picture of that. And I want to end today with that picture. And as you see this, as we, as we release this in a minute, I want you to think about whatever it is you're, you're in intercession for. What, not, not several things, one thing. I think the Lord's going to give us one thing. See, we can get so scattered, we, we're not, we, we lose our focus. But, but think about one thing. Think about what... Paul said and what the word says about all those things that happened before the foundation of the world. Consider the fact that the person you're praying for is predestined. 
is just, I mean, predestined. That is, that is like a pull from heaven on earth. It's a pull from heaven on that purse person. It's like God knew and he was saying, I got to get somebody in here. I got to get a bunch of people in here. I got to get, you know, a nation in here. However, however you're doing it, but we're going to pull it forward. And when you look at this graphic, begin to see the spirit of the Lord move. It reminded me, it reminded me of the wheels in Ezekiel in some ways, in some ways. And I wish it were going up, but this is the one. I looked at several, and this is the one the Lord said. What I see when I look at that is heaven saying, this is a graphic that says, I've got that person. I don't care whether you see it flopping to the left or flopping to the right. I've got that person, and there's a track, and I'm going to bring that up because I've already predestined it. I've done it before the foundation of the world, and you just come into agreement with me from the place where you sit in heavenly realms, and you see that thing come out of the pit. You see that thing come out of confusion. You see that thing turn because of the name of Jesus and what he's told us today. Jesus himself, remember, said, I want them to be one with me. I want them to know my glory. I mean, that's awesome, isn't it? And then Paul says, we're seated up there. And then we know that John heard, come on up here. We can, folks. We can. You can. You can. Enter the heavenly realms. It's the place we belong. And it's, it's, it's time for someone, if you didn't know that, someone to tell you that you've got to begin to reach. And you've got to begin to say, Spirit of God, I want you to do whatever it takes to bring me into that place so that I can begin to plunder. I can begin to change things and I can begin to affect your will on earth. Thank you. I'm going to ask James to come up. James came up as Marty was sharing and he had a dream that he felt linked right in with this. Um, In this dream, there was a lot more that happened, but I want to get to what I feel really relates to what she's speaking on. In this dream, there was a part where I was going up to prophesy into somebody, and as I was, I was saying, okay, Lord, give me something, give me something. I'm supposed to be prophesying into this. I'm supposed to be prophesying into this. And as I was walking and everything around me was so beautiful, uh, somebody came and showed me a picture of where I was standing uh, that was actually previous it was and what i and i saw wow i'm actually standing in a fulfillment of something that i had already that had already been prophesied into before and so then i walked up into this room to go see the lord and the lord appeared before me in this room and he said what is the great weight of the people and i gave him some answer i don't remember what i said but i was trying to give him the right answer and he ignored me. He totally ignored my answer. And then he asked me again, what is the great weight of the people? And I said, it's to be with you where you are. And I felt his delight when, he, when, he, when, when I answered that. And then I'm not going to say what he, said, what he said to me, but he said, your maker is. And in that dream, your maker meant who you are. What, what your makeup is, what you were created to be. And ever since that dream, it's like I've been living in this place of just being what he said. And a lot of times we're not realizing that we are in that place of glory. We operate from that place of glory. I want everyone here to stand up a minute before we, before we leave. I want Marty to pray into that. You heard her, that call for where we're destined to be for the path that the Lord has us to be drawn into. So, Marty, I want you to close this time for the agreement with the people that are here, those who are joining us on webcast, for that to become that next dimension of reality. 
we're at the place of breakthrough, the place of release. We want to be able to speak into that. I, I just feel compelled to say this. Um, very similar, the Lord gave me a dream a few years ago, which we are literally walking in right now in some situations. And it's like we'll take a step into something. And I'm not saying it, it's an easy situation. It's a difficult situation. But I, it's like I have flashbacks to the dream. And it's like we were appointed to be in this place at this time doing this thing. And so then everything within me just aligns everything, just like all the molecules align. And we just take another step in confidence. And I'm going to tell you that has happened five or six times, literally. And so the thing about being predestined is that God sees ahead and before. And, and I want to say this, everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness, he's already provided it. And he has said several times, everything you need is already all around you. So as you're walking in that path that has been prepared before, when you get there and you recognize it, just stop and align yourself with the purposes of God. Because as Marty was talking, he said, I've formed you to not be conformed, but to be transformed so that you may reform. And I'm telling you, there is a call for reformers right now to be rising up in the earth. And there, I, it made sense because during worship, I saw the thing being, the document, the decrees being nailed to the wall, into the door. And it reminded me of Martin Luther, who was a reformer. So I'm telling you, the spirit of the reformer is being released as we are connecting with exactly what Marty has released today. Just know that God has appointed you for some, even some difficult places because there's something he wants to reform. Amen. Well, Father, I come right now and we just give you praise that you are the most high God. You are the most high God, that you have called us for such a time as this, that you have equipped us, that you have trained our hands for war, that you call us a, a mighty troop, that you say that we are able to see things accomplished that we couldn't even begin to think or imagine. And I decree that everyone here and everyone listening by the web, by the power of the Holy Spirit of God and by the power of the great name of Jesus would begin to grab hold of that revelation that who we are in Christ is the person to begin to decree in these situations, in these nations, and over our loved ones. In the name of Jesus, amen. Awesome. Well, we want to thank you for joining us today. We will be back tomorrow night when we start head of the year. That'll start at 7 o'clock. So for you, join us here on site. Those of you on web, we'll look forward to seeing you then. God bless you today.